This is everything I took with me on my 93 mile hike on the Wonderland Trail around Mount Rainier. I'm outside, it's fly season, so please excuse all the flies. We'll start off with what I wore. Starting at the bottom, I wore these Ultra Lone Peak 8s along with some darn tough socks. Two days straight in the rain, my feet completely soaked. I did not get one single blister. So this is absolutely my go-to combination for all my backpacking trips in the near future. I probably have almost 200 miles on these Lone Peak 8s and I had heard bad things about their durability. Almost all of that time is on the trail backpacking and they are holding up really well so far. Next, I have these bright orange REI brand shorts. These things were awesome for backpacking. They dried out super quick on the rainy days. And then of course, this amazing, incredible sun hoodie from Jolly Gear. I actually just ordered another one because I liked it so much. For your reference, I'm about 5'10", 215 pounds. This is an extra large. It's a little bigger than I would prefer, so I ordered a large and we'll see how that one's gonna fit. For sunglasses, I was wearing these Ombras, which are pretty cool glasses. They're armless, they have this cord that goes around your head. I really, really liked them. They're very expensive at $160. If they hold up and the quality is there, then I'll say they're worth it, but only time will tell. Then of course, my outdoor research hat. I also tracked my entire hike on my Garmin Venue 2. I tracked with GPS and only had to charge it every two days. Moving on to my backpack. Actually, let's just get these out of the way. I got these Cascade carbon fiber trekking poles from Costco. They weigh about seven and a half ounces each and they only cost $20 for the pair. Absolutely worth it. These things held up great over 93 miles. Now moving on to my backpack. This is the Neighborhood Packs 40 liter Crestone, Crestone 40 liter, whatever, ultra grid material. This pack is super light and amazingly comfortable. Once I learned how to pack it, this thing just sits so comfortably on me. I didn't get sore shoulders once during those nine days and 93 miles. I ordered mine with the hip belt because I'm not an ultralight backpacker. My base weight for this trip was probably around 17 pounds. My total packed weight was probably around 25 with food and water. And despite that, they recommend as an absolute max weight being 30 pounds. At 25 pounds, like I said, I was so comfortable. My shoulders never got sore. It was really just about figuring out how to get all that weight to rest on my hips and I was so comfortable. I also got the hip belt pouch, which is where I kept all my snacks. It's empty now, of course, because I ate all my snacks. I also have this shoulder strap pouch from Evolve Supply Co. This is where I kept my phone along with the quad lock tripod. These pockets are incredible for holding water bottles. I'm able to just reach back, grab my water bottle and drink that throughout the day. So of course I carried two of these smart water bottles. Um, I only needed two one day. The rest of the time I just had one full of water. We'll start with this top pouch here. I have the Adventure Medical Kits 0.5. It's nice and flat, comes with a lot of great stuff, super simple. On my front pocket here, carry my poop kit. It's got a Bogler trowel, some dude wipes, some hand sanitizer, and some toilet paper, of course. My Sawyer Squeeze water kit. And I turned this into a gravity feed system, which I really, really like. So of course, the Sawyer Squeeze. And then I also have this adapter, which can go directly into a water bottle and also into my Canock, Seanock, Knock, water bags. So this is my clean water bag, blue for clean, orange for dirty. These things are so easy to fill up. If you're still using the Sawyer bags, you gotta switch to these. They are infinitely easier to fill up. Oh, leftover Ziploc bag, because one night it got below freezing, so I slept with my filter in my sleeping bag with me. The back flush kit, which I don't really need because I can just back flush from one bag into the other, but I don't know, just in case, this thing's pretty light. And then one extra cap. I can connect it right to the bag and it pops open, so I can drink directly out of it, squeeze directly out of it, or it can be a replacement cap for my water bottle if something happened to one of my caps. Just the mesh bag that the solar squeeze filter came in. And then the last thing in this big front pocket is my Zolio, which is a satellite communication device and tracker. I was hiking with 11 other people, so 
it wasn't really vital that someone knew where I was at all times because I was with such a large group. If I was hiking by myself, I would keep that in a more accessible spot, maybe just hanging from one of my shoulder straps. I did not really utilize either of these bottom pockets. You could put snacks or maps in there, but I don't have the greatest shoulder flexibility, so I don't really utilize those pockets. And then in the other side pocket here, I have my Helinox Chair Zero. This thing is amazing. And then my Frog Dogs rain jacket. I also had a pair of rain pants. They ripped right down the middle. Um, I had them mostly for around camp. I don't like hiking in pants, even on rainy days. I just don't like it. But the jacket held up through the whole thing. Zipper held up fine. I can't recommend Frog Togs enough for the price to wait. You really can't beat it. And this moved around. It wasn't always in my side pocket. Sometimes I'd have it on top, like if it was wet. Obviously, sometimes I'd be wearing it, but pretty good little jacket. Now moving to the inside. So this pack is super cool. You can just do the Y strap to hold it on top, but I also kept these side straps on because I use the stick stashers from Spud's Adventure Gear. I really like these things for getting hands-free pretty quickly when you're hiking along. You just gotta learn where they are, and these things are, are awesome. I do have to say this bag, although it's made out of waterproof material, it's seam sealed, incredibly, incredibly high quality pack. It is not waterproof. Two days straight of rain, finally soaked through the pack, but I use a pack liner, so it was not a big deal at all. You just have to pack intelligently. First of all, I bring camp shoes. Being able to put on dry socks and have camp shoes to walk around camp, honestly, I just think Crocs are where it's at. You can't beat them. They didn't always go inside if they were wet or muddy. You know, I'd roll the top up, I'd put the Crocs on top, like this and then that y strap would go there's a wasp right there and then the y strap would go over the top and just hold them on like that it's kind of next to each other on top my ditty bag and my tent so first let's go through the ditty bag so with an ultralight pack like this that's basically just one big cylinder there's not a lot of extra pockets or anything so a ditty bag to me is super important Took some Shox headphones, used these a couple times. These are awesome because you can still hear. I don't really listen to headphones a lot when I'm backpacking, but these are so small and light, I figure why not take them. Little repair kit for my air mattress or anything else like the tent or anything that might get a hole in it. Some paracord for hanging a bear bag, which you didn't need on the Wonderland Trail. They've got uh, bear hanging poles and boxes at all the campsites. This thing was my most worthless piece of gear on the trail. The Zero Pump by Flextail just didn't work for me. So I've used it a few times in the past and it worked great. And it was an absolute waste on this trip, fully charged and it just didn't have enough oomph to pump up my air mattress. This is the only piece of gear I regret taking though. Everything else was phenomenal. Anchor battery bank, this one's 10,000 milliamps. I actually use the 20,000, I just don't have it with me. I really like this Benz Bug Spray, 100D. It works really, really well. Tenacious Tape Mini Patches, which I did not need to use on this trip, thankfully. This little pair of scissors, I can't remember what they're called. I got them from Garage Grown Gear. I did use these a number of times. My little free toothbrush from garage grown gear this flashlight i cannot say enough good things about this flashlight it's awesome i do not remember the brand i'll put it on screen i got it on amazon it's so light just clips onto your hat like this i love it this is my first time ever using earplugs the earplugs they don't block out all the sound but it was enough that it wouldn't startle me awake i highly recommend earplugs while you're backpacking if you struggle at all with sound while you're sleeping especially falling asleep this little cord is pretty cool i use it for everything except my watch because it's convertible so USB A, USB C, USB C, lightning and micro usb so super cool cord and then the last thing, I'll show you how it works in a minute when I have my uh, lighter, my fire beaner out. So for now, that's it for my ditty bag. Next up is something that I am so excited about. It is the Durston X-Mid one. This tent, you guys, this is my favorite tent I've ever owned. This thing was absolutely awesome. If you're considering an X-Mid one or an X-Mid two, I found the X-Mid one to have plenty of space inside for me. You've got two big vestibules. This backpack being frameless, I was able to just roll up and put at my feet. I could keep everything inside the tent with me. This tent is amazing. Only 30 ounces, less than two pounds. This is not the pro version. This is the Sil Poly nylon one. 
and it was amazing. It definitely holds on to the rain a little bit. When I packed it up, just kind of shook it out and packed it away and it was perfectly fine. My first trekking pole tent ever and it was super, super easy to set up and take down every day. Little uh, towel for wiping off my tent or possibly jumping in a lake. That's why I kind of kept it at the top. My food bag, so I got this. Maybe it's a Dyneema bag, I don't know, from uh, Garage Grown Gear. Of course, there's no food in here right now. Uh, I do like this bag. So it clips together. It's got these hooks so you can use a uh, carabiner and you can do you know, some kind of hang method. I like the PCT hang method. This max out for me about three days of food. In my cook system, I use this Vargo Bot 700. I just upgraded from a pot that was very similar to the Tokes, but it didn't have this screw on lid. I really like this. It's got a seal in here. You can cold soak in here, which I did multiple times, never leaked. Combine that with BRS 3000T stove through nine days, 93 miles, all kinds of weather. This thing never let me down. I really like it. I have a Tokes titanium folding spoon. I do wish it was longer, but I love being able to fit it inside my cook pot. That's why I keep using it, super lightweight. And then this, the fire beaner. I use it every day to light my stove. You just flick this here. So much simpler than a lighter or matches. I never have to worry about fuel in my lighter running out and it's multi-purpose. This thing is so cool. And then lastly, of course, I can fit a little fuel canister in there as well. So this thing, it's essentially, this entire thing is a match is how you can think of it. So you just kind of fluff out the end, which I'll do on the concrete. Then you take some kind of flint and steel and you just so now you basically have a match. I just keep it in my pack in my ditty bag as a little backup to go along with my fire beaner, but I just think this thing is so cool. Now we're down to the pack liner, which I used a Nyla flume for about half the trip before it blew out. So three of us, I think three of us on the trip had Nyla flume pack liners and three of them failed. So in the future for a trip that long, I think I would take a backup pack liner because they're so lightweight. For me, I have used that pack liner probably a total of at least a dozen days on the trail, maybe more, but the bottom ended up blowing out and that may have been because I was just pressing stuff in there too hard. So I don't know, I'll, I'll keep using it. I'm gonna keep giving it a chance. What it did do is it kept all my stuff dry the entire time. Even when that bottom blew out and I didn't realize it, it still kept my stuff dry that day, so I can't complain too much. So first thing is my sleeping bag and sleeping bag liner, which I have absolutely come to love my sleeping bag liner. I got this sleep, oh, I shouldn't say sleeping bag, sleeping quilt. Got this on sale at REI for 80 bucks. It's a, a magma quilt, a 30 degree magma quilt. Size small, which surprisingly, it comes right up to my shoulders it's been perfectly fine for me, especially for $80. And combined with this, this is a Sea to Summit sleeping bag liner. I think it's maybe some kind of fleece or something, um, but this makes all the difference. This keeps me so warm and so cozy. And then this is what's getting dirty and not my sleeping quilt. And it's also a barrier between me and my sleeping pad because I don't like sleeping directly on my sleeping pad. So if you've considered a sleeping bag liner, I highly recommend it. I've been really, really happy with this one. So I've seen videos where people just put their clothes in their sleeping bag and then they shove that down into the bottom of their um, frameless packs. I tried that on a few trips and I didn't find it to be the most efficient way for me to pack. I didn't like, I felt like it ended up being bulkier. I wasn't happy with it. So this is how I pack and, and it worked really well for me. This is a very comfortable way for me to pack. The last big item down there is my extra clothes. Just a cheap pair of gloves to wear, especially in the mornings when I'm packing up my gear. These worked awesome. Just some of these cheap, stretchy, probably cotton gloves. And then this jacket from Enlightened Equipment. My wife got me this for Christmas. This is so ridiculously warm. It's uh, synthetic, it's not down, so I didn't have to worry about it getting wet. It packs down super small. I'll, I'll link it down below. Um, a lot of the links will be garage grown gear because that's where I got a lot of my stuff and that's a great, great website, great company. Down booties, outdoor vitals. I actually didn't even use them, but they pack down so small and they're so light. Why not? Extra pair of darn tough socks. Always gotta have dry, warm, clean socks to sleep in for camp. Alpaca wool beanie. This may also be from Garage Grown Gear. Extra pair of underwear, non-cotton. And then these, I didn't really love these. These are from Garage Grown Gear. This is basically 
some camp pants. I have some smart wool pants. They're a little bit heavier, um, but they're way more comfortable and warmer. So I don't necessarily recommend these. I do recommend the smart wool base layer. Those ones are super warm and super comfy. They did keep me warm, so can't complain about them, except I guess I already did. And then the last two things, if you're trying to figure out how to pack a frameless ultralight pack. So I heard advice from multiple different people. You just fold up your sleeping pad and you slide it in like that. That worked great, really liked it. But I doubled down on that idea and I also did the same thing with my pillow, which is a pillow, not my favorite pillow. It, it was fine, it worked okay, but I really like a thicker pillow. So from now on, I'm gonna take this along with my Thermarest, which is basically just like a miniature version of a house pillow. This though, the Nemo Tensor All Season maybe, whatever one's like the 5.2 hour value, 5.4 hour value. This is the most comfortable sleeping pad I've ever had. I slept so good, so warm, so comfortable every night. It's the regular, I'm 5'10", it's regular wide version because I'm kind of a wide person. I can't say enough good things about this Nemo Tensor sleeping pad. I love it, it's, it's awesome. That's everything I took with me on the Wonderland Trail, the 93 mile trail that goes around Mount Rainier, a whole bunch of elevation gain and descent, 93 miles, we did it in nine days, and this setup was incredible. I loved everything I took other than that zero pump. Not very happy with that, but this is a good setup. If you have any questions, Anything you want to know more about, leave a comment down below and I will try to respond to everything. And again, I'll leave links in the description for everything. Amazon links are going to be affiliate. Everything else will just be not affiliate. <laughs> Thanks for watching. I'll see you on the trail.